Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com. In this video, you're going to learn how to request a review for your suspended Google Merchant Center account. I'm going to take you through the exact process for requesting a review, including two different methods you can use. This video was directly taken from a course that I created that shows you how to find the error that caused the suspension, how to fix that error, and then how to properly request a review and get your suspension lifted in Google Merchant Center. So let's get into the video, but I'll also leave a link in the description below with a playlist where I've made a lot of other videos on YouTube showing you more about the suspensions. I'll also leave a link to the actual course so you can go and check it out if you're interested. Anyway, let's get into the video. So you'll see on this homepage, you'll often have this big red banner saying suspended due to policy violation, might say misrepresentation, might say unacceptable business practices. Uh, you can click contact us if you want. That's the second way to do it, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to do it first. So what you wanna do is go down to uh, products and then diagnostics. You don't want to see any product disapproval information here, except for what's directly related to the actual suspension. So pending initial review, that's because this was this account was likely suspended during the initial review process. So Google just crawled their website and then suspended them for policy violation. So you want to go to account settings, account issues here, and then here it says policy account issues, account suspended due to policy violation, request review. So you're going to click that. You're going to have to ask you, have you actually gone and fixed this? So this is Google saying, have you actually gone and resolved the issues, check the policies before you request? Click that if you have, and then click request review. That's what you're gonna do. I'm not gonna do it for this account because we're not ready yet, but that's what you do. Super, super simple. It's gonna start the process really, really easy. If you don't see this button, it might be because it's not available to you. Sometimes Google hides it, but also it depends on your country, okay? So to, to, to actually request a review, if you don't see this button, you go back to the overview and you should see a contact us button here. That's gonna open a new tab and it's gonna open up this page and I'm gonna link this below just in case you don't even have that either. That actually is a form for suspensions. It's for disapproved accounts, feeds, items. If you have no idea what's going on, you can actually request support here, but you could also appeal and request a review for your suspension. So contact name, that's just gonna be your name. Really, really easy. Uh, don't lie about that, of course. Um, your contact email where they can contact you if you wanna CC anyone else in. That's not really necessary, but it's an auto filter for me anyway. Virgin Center ID, that's just gonna be the ID up here. Super, super easy. The Merchant Center login email, it's the same login that you use to log into Merchant Center. Google Ads customer ID, that's the same, it's not the same number, but it's the same ID. It's up in the top right-hand corner of your Google Ads account. I'm not gonna do it on this screen share, but it's the same sort of ID, but it's for Google Ads. If you've linked it to Merchant Center or you've already started some campaigns, use that, just gives Google a bit more information. It says here, log into ads.google.com to retrieve your customer ID. So it tells a bit of information about that. The website URL, that's gonna be your store URL, of course, or whatever you're, whatever, you're, wherever you're selling your items that this feed is sending traffic to. Now, the disapproved data feed file name. This is really easy to find. Just go, actually wrong place, go to feeds. For this, this account, they're using the content API. They're pulling the data straight from Shopify. They're not using a feed URL. Okay, so a feed URL, what does this mean? So there are different ways that you can set up your product feed. And sometimes you can even add feeds, like add products directly into Merchant Center. In this case, they're pulling from, uh, looks like the Shopify app straight over. Uh, you can also use the Google Sheets method, but you can also use other third-party software that creates a URL. So it's a URL just like this, but when Google accesses that URL, they're gonna be able to pull the feed. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So they're gonna be able to pull the feed from that URL if you don't have it, you, you'll know that you're using this if you have set up your feed this way, but I'm trying to explain it clearly for you guys. So you're gonna put that URL here uh, just so that Google can go and check it. If you don't have a feed set up with Google Sheets or a third-party review software, uh, third-party software, sorry, and you're set up like this one, like with the Google Shopping app or the Symprosis app, um, then you're not gonna have a URL unless you've done some weird method. And what you're gonna put in, you can just put in the actual feed name. So Shopify websites, so that would just be, uh, um, Shopify website. Okay, select the country you're targeting and that's gonna be whatever country that your feed is, is targeting. Country of sale, United States. So this would be United States. So you're gonna go down and scroll that. Options, okay, this is where you're actually gonna tell Google what you're actually filling out, why you're actually filling out this form. So if you need information about a policy or data uh, quality account suspension warnings, then you can click that one. And then it's gonna just start the conversation with Google. I already taught you how to call them, call Google and how to start live chat. I prefer those because it's direct and you're not waiting days to get a response and you're less likely to get a canned response as well. But if you still uh, can't get onto live chat for whatever reason, I do recommend using a VPN and going to another, like using that to, to log in via another country just because that's just gonna be way better. But you can also use this to actually find information about your suspension. 
Um, I've never actually used this, so I'm not sure because I've just used the live chat or call or calling because it's just super, super fast. Um, it's up to you, you know, try that out. Let me know how it goes. Uh, but otherwise, if you're trying to appeal the suspension, I have you slept the second one. I've corrected the issues related to product data violations and the review button is not available in my country. Just like I said before, sometimes that happens. Sometimes Google hides that, that button there. Let me just show you again, just so that we're on the same page. So sometimes Google hides this button, uh, but uh, sometimes it's because of your, wherever you're located, but sometimes it can just be because you've requested a review too many times. There can be many reasons. Sometimes it's just not there. Google's a mystery sometimes. Um, so yes, you can select that one. And would you like your Google representative to reply by emailing or calling you? That's really up to you. If you want to speak on the phone with them, you could do that. Great opportunity to start speaking to them and pressing them. Otherwise you can email. I'd actually prefer to call me, but um, it depends on how often you use your phone, if you keep it on and all that sort of stuff. Uh, some of the issue, that's where you're just gonna detail basically um, that you've had the suspension and that you fixed, say, the refunds and returns page, sort of stuff that you fixed. That's a really, really good uh, idea. Don't tell them, hey, um, I'm now showing you that I'm not dropshipping anymore. Like, as in, don't don't tell them that you're dropshipping because that's a policy violation, but that you're hiding it. Don't say, oh, yeah, I've reduced the, the shipping time on my page so that you can't see that I'm dropshipping. Uh, unless, you know, that's just not good. I don't recommend doing that because that's, you know, they're going to use that. So what I recommend just doing is say, yep, I fixed the returns of refunds page. I got better shipping times, um, blah, 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 blah. Put in, just put in what you've done there, really. Um, my account is suspended. Um, that's like, you know, that's the other thing as well. It's like this form is for, it's quite broad. So, you know, I fixed the returns of refunds policy page. Can you please uh, review my suspension uh, of my account? Um, send me automated email responses. Um, I recommend doing that. Yes. Okay. You don't need to submit. That's, you know, that's that's not required for this this uh, this uh form that we're, why we're doing this form. Click submit and then that should start the process there. So that's pretty much it guys. Super, super straightforward. One last thing I'll say on uh, the amount of times that you can actually request a review of your suspension. So people ask me this a lot. Hey, can I, can I just keep requesting reviews? What I recommend doing is just being really, really sure that you fix the suspension policy, like the policy that caused the suspension before you request a review because eventually, and I've spoken about this a little bit in another video, is um, eventually Google can say, hey, we're not gonna, you know, you can't request a review anymore. It's final. We're stopping, you know, your emergency account. It's suspended forever. You don't wanna get to that point. And you get to that point by requesting so many times, often six, eight, nine, ten 10 times. And then Google just says, stop bothering us. You're wasting our time. You're never gonna fix this. Uh, you have no hope. You can still get uh, appealed after that. Like I've seen that happen before and I talk about it in that other video in this course. But you don't want to get to that point, guys. So really make sure that you you fix those problems before you actually request a suspension. Like I said, the real work is done before you actually do this process. The real work is done going through the checklist, fixing the site, fixing your budget center account, all the details and everything like that uh, before you actually get here. Um, and the last thing I'll say is that generally you can request a review um, twice and then Google actually puts you in a cool down period. So you request once, it takes about seven days for them to fix it depending on you know, how quick they are, depending on how many suspensions they're reviewing. And then often you can request one more time, but they kind of get sick of it and they say, okay, you need a cooling out, cooling down period. A cooling down period is basically where they just suspend your account. You can't request a review for, for at least another week, sometimes more. And that's kind of where you're just kind of sitting there twiddling your thumbs, not getting any sales. Um, so that's why, you know, you have two big shots at getting this right. You can still have more shots after that. Um, and even if that, that review, request a review button isn't there, you can still contact them and, and keep going through the process. But it's just going to make your time much longer. You're better off spending just like an extra couple of hours right now fixing it so you don't have to wait weeks and weeks later on. That's my advice. Um, so that's it. That's it for this video. That's how you request a review. Like I said, all the work happens in the other videos, the other the checklist and getting that stuff. There's no magic bullet here, but that's just explaining the process. So it's really clear to you guys so you know what to expect. Uh, that's it. Hope this was helpful. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful for you to learn how to actually request a review of your suspended Google Merchant Center account. If this video was helpful, I really appreciate it if you give it a like and let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more videos like this one and just wanna learn how to grow your e-commerce store, I make a lot of videos on all parts of growing an e-com store, so check out my channel, my other videos. If you wanna follow along as you grow your own e-commerce store, then consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you actually get told when I make a new video. I'm making videos twice a week now, pumping them out for you guys, trying to make really, really helpful content. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.